Welcome to EV Tech Explained. This is a three-part series looking at Tesla's battery technology. There's already a video on part one, the cell. This video will look into part two, the module. Tesla's 18650 lithium-ion cells are inserted into battery modules before being inserted into battery packs. The modules themselves are variable in size as the parallel configuration is altered for the different capacity battery packs offered. Tesla's first generation battery packs, such as those that appeared in the 85 and 90 kWh batteries, consisted of 15 modules. Their second generation battery packs, which are featured in the facelift and Model S, consist of 16 modules. So, what is a battery module and why is it used? Why don't we simply put all of the cells directly into a battery pack? Well, one of the big reasons is ease of manufacture. In Tesla's 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, there are over 8,000 cells, meaning there are over 16,000 electrical cell connections. Breaking this up into chunks of approximately 1,000 cell connections per module makes, makes this task far more manageable. Further, the ability to downsize components, such as the cooling pipes within the thermal management system, allow for the relaxation of component uniformity and tolerance targets, thereby reducing cost and complexity. Another key reason for the use of modules is safety in manufacturing. The module from an 85 kilowatt hour Tesla pack has a configuration of 6S74P. This yields a maximum voltage of approximately 25 volts. According to IEC 60038, anything below 120 volts DC is considered to be very low risk of causing an electric shock through dry human skin. Additional reasons for the use of battery modules include safety in the event of cell failure or in the event of a crash. If a single cell were to catch fire, it is preferable to limit the number of cells exposed to the fire and hence potentially re reduce the severity of said fire. Further, from a serviceability perspective, if a fault were to occur for any reason with a cell or with a joint, it is preferable to replace a module rather than an entire battery pack. Tesla currently has three battery modules in the marketplace. The module used within the Model S and the Model X is the best known of these modules and has been updated and developed over time. The module within the Tesla power pack transitioned to 21700 cells rather than sticking with the 18650 cells used within the Model S and the Model X. Further, it uses base cooling rather than cooling tubes in between the cells. This reduces the cost and also the complexity. Further, this efficiently enables the modular rack system within the power pack cabinets as shown in the image on the right hand side. Relatively little is known about the Model 3 modules, other than they are significantly larger than the modules found within the Model S and the Model X. They use a 21700 cell as per the power pack. They have a refined thermal management system and they join both the positive and negative terminals on the same end of the cell rather than on opposing ends. The remainder of this video will focus on the modules used within the Model S and the Model X as they are the most well known. So let's take a look at the bus bar. The images show the top and bottom views of the module, illustrating that they appear to be in four segments on the top view and three segments on the bottom view. As this is a module for a 100 kilowatt hour pack, each bus bar segment will connect 86 parallel positive cell terminals with 86 parallel negative cell terminals for a series connection between the two, except for those bus bars which connect to the large orange terminals seen in the top image. On the top view, the red segments show where connections are made with the positive terminal, and we can see the corresponding locations in blue on the bottom view as the negative terminals. The adjacent segments have an opposing polarity and the positive and negative sides of each series string are shown.
Tesla use wire bonding to electrically connect the cells to the bus bars. Whilst this methodology does increase resistance, thereby reducing operating efficiency and increasing heat generation, it is a technique with a number of advantages too. No significant heat is generated or introduced to the cell during the joining procedure. The wire bond acts as a fuse. And if a joint were to fail for any reason, it is highly unlikely to damage the cell, thus waste in manufacturing is reduced. A module of 100 kilowatt hours has 516 cells and therefore requires 1032 wire bonds. If the process were to be 99.9% .9 effective, one joint per module is likely to fail, hence manufacturability is a key consideration. Let's take a quick look at some key module electrical properties. The voltage can be calculated by multiplying the minimum, nominal or maximum voltage of each cell by the number of cells in series. This module has a nominal voltage of 21.6 volts. To calculate the stored energy within a module, we multiply the cell capacity by the module nominal voltage and the number of cells in parallel. Given that Tesla uses cells in this application, which are 3.4 amp hours in capacity, the nominal voltage of the module is 21.6 volts, and we have 86 cells in parallel, we can calculate that this module stores 6.3 kilowatt hours of energy. The image shows the cooling pipes from within the module. The thermal management system within the module consists a long, largely flat and straight, metallic pipe which loops its way through the module. The cooling pipe is covered in grey thermal interface material which provides electrical isolation between the cooling system and the battery cells while still providing some level of heat transfer. As is evident, the contact area between the cooling pipe and cell via the thermal interface material is limited. At the bends of the pipe, an orange tape can be seen, which is known as captain tape and provides further electrical isolation. A water glycol coolant is fed into the inlet and this water passes through the cooling pipe through to the outlet in a series fashion. Via a patent application, we are able to see the cooling pipes which Tesla has used in the module for the Model 3. The wavy pipes increase the cell contact area, thereby improving the effectiveness of the thermal management system when compared to the long, straight pipes used within the Model S and the Model X. Further, these wavy pipes enable a more efficient packaging solution by reducing the average cell-to-cell -cell separation distance. As a result, more cells can be packaged into the same space. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you found this video useful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned for part 3 where we'll look into Tesla's pack design.